Good morning. Wanted to discuss a little project we've been working on. This is going to be CSI Linux 2022.1. This is actually based off of Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server. So we did this to make it a little bit faster, a little bit smaller overhead. And for the most part, it does seem to be uh, working pretty well. We have made some uh, minor changes. You will see here during the boot up process, uh, once it completes, uh, we now have a new splash screen to log in. Uh, so you can lock the screen as well. It's going to go back to the same splash screen. But uh, for the most part, it uh, definitely does seem to be a, a little bit uh, quicker. So, I'm going to log in. And I'm going to discuss a, a couple um, changes within the environment. For example, the taskbar, we did move to the middle instead of uh, going all the way across the screen or focusing on the left-hand side. Uh, we also changed Chrome, replaced it with the Brave browser. We did that for security reasons, privacy, leakage, things in that area. What's nice about Brave is it is based off Chromium, and we were able to tie in Hunchly. So if you have a, a license key, you should be able to log in just fine and use it with that. I uh, made a couple changes within the, the Tor VPN. So I'm going to go to log in. It makes it a little bit more graphical so we can see. It helps a little bit more with troubleshooting. Um, made a little progress bar. And then just added more content related to what's going on in the back end. So it looks like we did work. That uh, actually was pretty quick. Uh, now we're just going to go into a dark website. We're going to go to a Hami's uh, uh, Onion website, and that seemed to work just fine as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. We did add Cherry Tree. So, the README instead of a basic text file, it is a Cherry Tree database. So, it's going to have your basic content. Uh, this is going to be uh, modified right before the final release. So, we have a few more touch ups we're going to be working on as well. Um, but all in all, it basically just has uh, content related to what the updates are and uh, support links, things in that area, and also how to communicate with uh, the rest of the community. We did add a few more tools. For example, Stacer just makes it to where it looks a little bit more clean. It's cleaner. Uh, it gives you also some capabilities related to identifying certain content within uh, the system, hardware, uh, what's running at startup, things in that aspect. Uh, we still have the Conky. So those of you that uh, definitely liked that, you can uh, click right up here for CS Monitor, and then we have this back up. We did not set it to where it automatically um, starts up, mainly because uh, we had a few people that were saying it did slow the system down. You don't really see it's usually a pretty low overhead, but just in case. And also, it can make a system a little bit cleaner. You also have your good old HTOP with an HTOP, very similar to your good old uh, task manager. We have the What's My IP, just a simple script that goes out, tries to find the Surface Web IP address and the, the Tor address. Because we're going through Tor right now, both addresses are going to be Tor, so we're actually not going to see where I'm really coming from. Right now it says I'm coming from Amsterdam and France. We have an item here for devices and this is what we were talking before about the lock screen and then of course a shutdown feature. This is going to be your good old capture screen. So we did change a couple of the icons and this is going to be recording your desktop. We did try to keep the, uh, the layout very similar or the, mostly the same. We did switch out a few tools here and there. We did remove Python 2. That saved a, quite a bit of space and also uh, makes it a little bit more secure because there's some issues with Python 2. Um, so that did make it to where there's a small handful of tools that we did have to either remove or replace. But we are going to be adding some more as we go. We did replace Armor with Exodus. This is just a more feature full cryptocurrency wallet. Some of the sites we do also have, for example, like here, it's the newest and greatest autopsy as of today. We also have links to user documentation.
So all in all, for the most part, we tried to keep it very similar to the last version, 2021.2. Definitely are some major upgrades. Beside that, we'll go ahead and shut those down. And then you'll start to see how fast it is to shut down as well. Usually pretty quick. Outside that, the OVA file is going to be, right now it's about 6 gig. We're probably going to have two different versions. Uh, one's going to be a lighter version, uh, which is going to have most of the content in the OPT folder removed, so it can be downloaded later, uh, and then a full version. The lighter version is going to be probably right around uh, 5 gig, and the, the new full version is probably going to be somewhere around maybe 7 to 8 gig to download. We're also going to have a, a downloadable version for not just uh, VirtualBox, the OVA files, but an OVF file for VMware as too. And with the uh, OVF, that's going to be the open virtualization format. You should be able to port that into most other virtualization systems. And of course, we're going to have our DD. The DD is going to be the bootable image. Uh, it's going to be a forensic copy of the, the live running um, VM minus a couple items, such as the, the VirtualBox extensions. We're going to try to clean that up a little bit. But that is going to be a forensic copy. Uh, we do test our DD images before we put them up on the site. So they, they do work. Uh, so for example, if you use the HD raw copy and copy the DD file onto a USB thumb drive, that's going to be a forensic copy of our uh, uh, original system. And at that point, you should be able to boot up off that DD. We do have some documentation to follow through on that. Uh, so that's going to walk you through the steps on not only the downloading, the extraction of the zip file uh, to get the raw copy tool and the DD image out of it. And basically, step by step on how to point to the external drive and push it out. We will be focusing a little bit on that in a lab environment uh, within our instant response course on training.csilinux.com. That's going to be a new lab that we're going to be uh, pushing to build a triage drive. So for example, have a one terabyte drive or however large, have a small partition directly for bootable. The rest would be NTFS and have Windows tools on it. So you'd be able to put in a, um, the triage drive into a live running system, pull logs, pull evidence, or if you need to, you'd also have the bootable capability to start analyzing the contents of the disk right there. But outside that, that is a quick overview of just some of the minor changes in uh, CSI Linux 2022.1.